Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the automatic pilot on the Boeing 737 for PMDG. Now this is not going to be an exhaustive tutorial, this is going to be just enough to kind of get you in and out of trouble with the airplane. And keep in mind, there are different modes of automatic pilot inside of this aircraft that may affect things. Also keep in mind, keep in mind, keep in mind, right, right, it's going to have a big impact on how you program your FMS, is what's going to control what you have available to you as a pilot. Let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, we have the PMDG uh, 737, uh, great airplane. Uh, this is the pretty straightforward version. We're going to be dealing mostly with this big old thing here. This is the MCP. This is also known as the mode control panel. Uh, what do we care about here? Well, first of all, what we're interested in is we have the upper row, which is going to give us all the values. We're going to have the lower row, which is going to have all of our different modes. And of course, this switch way, way, way over on this side is going to be the one that enables us to go ahead and command it on and off. Uh, CWS, by the way, is your best friend if you need to do partial autobiotic pilot. It's actually kind of a slick trick, but that will be for another day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip it off. I'm going to click the switch here. I'm going to go ahead and come over here and click the switch here. The reason I did that is because I'm making this side the main one. You see this MR? So if I set this one over here on first, it's going to put this one as the main one for the flight director. Not a big deal. So anyway, let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to assume we're going to be taking a regular takeoff and we're going to pop up to 10,000 feet. What do we need to know? We need to know a couple different things. We need to know, first of all, what is our initial heading going to be? You can see it's been pre-programmed to treat 28 degrees, which if you come down here, you'll see that is our runway direction. The other thing we're interested in is what our first altitude is going to be. Again, whatever's in the box here is what your target altitude is. It is not necessarily your current altitude. Keep in mind that once your aircraft has leveled itself off at a specific altitude that what's going to happen is it's going to stay there until you change this and then tell it how to get to the next one. Uh, this is a little unintuitive uh, for those of you who are familiar with the FSX autopilot. This is a different way of doing it. The folks coming from X-Plane, by the way, you know exactly how this goes. A couple other things we have here is we have the different modes. You have your speed hold, you have your thrust hold, you have your flight level change button. You have your vertical navigation, yes, working vertical navigation. You also have your lateral navigation, which we'll take a look at. You can do VOR lock, you can do approach. You have a heading select. Keep in mind the heading select button is not the same thing as the heading hold button. So what a lot of people will do is on certain versions of the 737 is you have a button here that you can actually push that will hold the heading that you've dialed in. And then you have a separate switch that will allow you to go ahead and select the heading. In my particular version that I selected the way I have it set up, I'm doing heading cell, which means I'm selecting the heading in the box. You don't have that particular mode where it's just going to hold it steady. You also, of course, come down here, you have the ability to go ahead and set your bank angle. You have your speed intervention button, and of course, you have the button that allows you to swap between mock. Coming over here, we have altitude hold. You can push that at any time to hold it. We have a vertical speed, which allows us to dial in our actual vertical speed we want to take off. One thing you have to remember is this system is a three-axis system. Well, what do I mean by that? I mean, it's going to give us pitch. It's going to give us roll, and it's also going to give us speed as long as auto throttle is selected. Once you select auto throttle, any mode that calls for auto throttle will immediately hijack your throttles for you. Keep in mind there are going to be certain positions where the throttle will not be able to operate because of restrictions or because you've overridden it. You can fly this entire aircraft without ever, ever touching the auto throttle, or you can fly this entire aircraft with never actually touching the throttle. Either one's perfectly acceptable. One thing you just have to remember, though, is when you are using automatic throttle, that it will take the control from you depending on how your options have been set up. So let's go ahead and uh, pick a random destination here just so we can kind of demonstrate some of the stuff. My nav data is out of date already. Uh, welcome to that, by the way. Let's just pick a quick route. Again, we're going to keep it super duper simple today just for the purposes of demonstration. We are running my tree tree today. We're going to be a destination. We're going to go to, uh, let's see here. We'll keep it super easy today. We'll do LaGuardia. We'll go ahead and say that we're traveling via HFD which is pretty straightforward. And we're also going to say, uh, where do we want to go? We'll go ahead, and that would be really out of the way. We'll do Hampton, which is HTO, Hotel Tango Oscar. I've got to find the letter H, though, apparently. Uh, that one looks pretty good. Hampton, and uh, we'll make it really convoluted, and we'll go via JFK also. Because, you know, why not? Let's make this complicated. Activate, execute. As soon as you do that, it should appear on the screen, which it does. Perfect. Oh, uh, wow. We have none of these numbers put in here. This is the one downside. If you try to start on the ground here, reserves is going to be one. Cost index for me, I usually do a really, really high number because I can. Uh, trip cruise altitude, I'm going to press in on request. It's going to go get it for just a second and kind of ask. While it's doing that, I'm just going to swing back here and kind of get everything set up on these side of things. I just want to make sure that's set okay. In a moment, it should come back with the request and it should say, would you like this altitude? And it's like, yeah, I'll take that altitude. I'm just interested in what my top altitude is so that I can program that. Let's go ahead and now, while that's going, I'm actually going to come down here, make sure that's set correctly. I'm actually going to flap that around so I can show you what that looks like as well. Whoosh, there it goes. Uh, let's see here. Would I like to load this performance? I will lovely. Execute. Success. So it's going to load all those. Ugh. Come on, man. You can do better than that. 
push that one right there execute 16,000 feet is fine I'm gonna go ahead and dial that in up here and like I said once we get airborne I'll show you some of the other features of the autopilot I'm just kind of doing the initial kind of whoops initial kind of little setup here and one limits take off bump please take off we're gonna do flaps five because why not looks good to me we're gonna set our V speeds correctly and we're gonna come down here we're gonna go double check our trim Oh, back up. You got to watch out for this trim. What is our takeoff trim going to be? Usually get this out of a chart. 5.89. Do, 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 do. Ah, there we go. All right, ready to rock. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to take off with automatic throttle here. So how would you do that normally? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the parking brake, which I'm going to disengage right here. The auto throttle button is this little button right here. Actually, wait a minute. Oh, let's float over here and double check. We are on flaps five. This is the little buttons here. This is your toga switch. You go click, and as soon as you do that, your throttles get stolen from you, and now we're on auto throttle mode. Um, what I like to do is actually have a button on my joystick that I can push for that particular purpose, but it's up to you, because again, it's the way you designed it. So we're gonna get accelerating, and we're gonna get airborne here, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip a couple switches, and we'll go ahead and see what the default modes are. Notice right now we're on what they call N1 mode, and then we switch to thrust hold mode, and notice we have the toga warning there. Uh, it is not the toga that you're thinking, but it is a toga. Rotate. Me too. Positive rate of climb. There we go. Going up. Okay, so notice the float, uh, float, what's that float director? Notice the flight director is commanding me to hold straight here. Uh, the reason it's commanding me to hold straight is I haven't held it to do anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll pull the uh, my flaps up here. I'm going to go ahead and pause for just a second so I can kind of show you what's going on. Okay, so the aircraft, uh, once it exceeds its uh, acceleration light, it's going to pitch over and it's going to start accelerating. So what we need to do now is decide what modes we're going to do. Normally after takeoff, we have to contact uh, basically the ground and let them know what our altitude is and everything like that, what we're doing, stuff along those lines. So what I'll typically do is after takeoff, notice how it held the wings kind of level with the flight director, I would then flip over to my LNAV and my VNAV. Again, my VNAV is going to control my up and down, my LNAV is going to be my left and right. So I'll select LNAV, which is I'm going to go ahead and select it, it's going to warn me about it, see how the flight director is switching to the left, and then we can select VNAV as a way to start making our way up, assuming we've inputted any sort of numbers into it. So go ahead and unpause here, and you can see the aircraft is commanding a left turn because it is doing LNAV, which again, if you remember, it's just a lateral navigation. Aircraft's getting a little on the slow side. Uh, this thing decided to pitch itself up to ridiculously high numbers. Okay, I'm just going to kind of swing over to the side here, and we're just going to pick up some speed. Our passengers, of course, are puking all over the place in the back because uh, we basically have subjected them to some pretty hefty negative Gs. Go ahead and give myself a little bit of nose up. This is actual weather this morning, by the way, in case you're curious. It was a bit hazy. Actually, not hazy. It was a bit um, foggy is really what it was. Go ahead and pause right here. Okay. So let's take a look at the next thing. One thing you're going to notice is the IAS mock box has blanked itself out. That is because the vertical navigation right now is hijacking this box and basically inputting the speed. If you want to know what speed it's inputting, you just come down here and take a peek. See how it's inputting a speed of 250. Keep in mind, at any point, we can come in here and we can intervene with the speed command. So for example, I can come in here and say, oh, I really want to do 250. And what the aircraft will do is, again, I'm frozen here, so it's going to confuse the heck out of it. It'll override whatever the VNAV is asking for it. So let's go ahead and pause again. Again, great way to freak this thing out is by going ahead and uh, trying to uh, pause this aircraft while the autopilot is operating. By the way, our autopilot has not actually started operating. This is all just through the flight director, which again gives you an idea of how powerful this is. So now notice, because I've hijacked my speed there, I can now dial in the exact speed that I want to pop up here. Let's say, for example, uh, you know, they want us to go down to 240. I could come in here and set this to 240, and the computer goes, oh, you meant 240, but you still want vertical navigation. It's like, yeah, thanks for that. So we start popping, and now notice this aircraft is now going to give me pitch controls or pitch suggestions to get me to 240. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip on the automatic pilot. And what's going to happen is the aircraft is now going to take that speed plus the mode it's currently on. To identify what mode we're on, again, we have a selected speed, we have lateral navigation, and we have vertical navigation. But see this SPD warning that we're overriding it. So what I can do now is I can come over here and press this button again. Now notice um, this little bug has popped up to 250, and notice that this is blanked out here. The reason this is blanked out is because we are now using the speed that is inside the computer. If you actually come over here and press the clip button, it'll tell you exactly what your target speed is when you cross it. 10,000. It'll also give you the current dialed in speed. So you can do some really, really silly things here. You could come in here and do something like 240 slash, click here, and you could actually order the plane to use a new climb speed of 240 knots. Now notice when we cross the 10,000 um, 
a foot line here, it's going to automatically select its new target speed, which is going to have a maximum of 340 and a maximum of 0.82. And like I said, at any point, you can come up here and you can mangle this button and you can set what speed you want. Like if you want to be like a speed demon here, we can do something like this. Yet you don't have to. It's just showing you how you can override the VNAV as it's already in action. So let's go ahead and I'll set it back to normal mode. I'll let this thing climb off. It's going to level off in about half a second here. and It's going to kind of do its own thing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, silence, silence, <laughs> silence done. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll pop my head over here real fast. We'll go ahead and freeze one more time. I know the aircraft hates it when I freeze, but I want to show you the different modes. Now let's say, uh, now that you kind of see how those things work, uh, how do other things work? Well, let's take a look. Let's say we wanted to do a little bit of VOR navigation. Now I've got it selected right now in Hartford VOR. And the other thing you'll notice is it's got this little green line this represents the course that we're interested in traveling. Let's say we get some funky thing that says we need to follow this on a specific course. It's like, okay, that's fine. So we just dial on the course we want to do. Notice it shows the reciprocal. Let's say we need to follow this on, I don't know, we'll do something like this. So we'll call it the 180 course. So they give us a call. They say, come to, um, you know, come left to a heading of 120, intercept the VOR for Hartford or something like that. So let's go ahead and uh, push some buttons here. So we're going to, ooh, I had a feeling this was going to pitch over. We're getting a little slow there. <laughs> Uh-oh, hopefully you don't die. And this is when you override the autopilot, and you smoothly pull back. This, by the way, is what happens when you unfreeze. That was a happy sound. <laughs> Go ahead and pitch up just a little bit. That alarm you hear, by the way, can be quickly reset by reaching over here. You've got these switches. You just pop this one right here, and it will immediately reset that one. So again, that is the danger of uh, trying to freeze. Oh, this thing needs oodles and oodles and oodles and oodles of up trim now. Come on, Trim. Come on, Trim. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to go re-give it back to the automatic pilot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the heading I want to go on. Let's say again, like I said, they asked us to do 120 here. So I'll select the heading I want. And swing it all the way around. And now I'm going to press the heading select button. Now notice when I press H cell, the LNAV light shut off because this is no longer telling us where to go. Instead, the VNAV, however, still is operating. And the reason VNAV is still operating is it doesn't know it needs a new speed until it crosses a waypoint that says, hey, this is the new speed we need to be on. So what I'll do now is I'll zoom just a teeny tiny bit, and then we'll go ahead and intercept the localizer. Now, if we want to fly a VOR, you have to make sure you're in the right frequency, which we are. And you're going to come up here and press the VOR lock button. Now, one word of warning, though. You want to make sure you're on an intercept course before you select this. Otherwise, it gets very grumpy at you. So I'm going to go ahead and press the VOR lock, and what's going to happen is it's going to lack onto this thing as soon as it grabs it. Now, if you want to see the VOR display a little bit better, what you can actually do is you can come up here. There's a VOR mode. If you click it to this mode, you can now see this little magenta line, which shows us the fact that we just went blasting through that uh, VOR point there, which makes perfect sense in my mind. Now, if you don't want to see that, you can pop back over to map mode. Uh, one thing, if you're very traditional, you can pop to map a VOR. You can press the center, and what it will do is it'll give you like a regular HSI. So this aircraft at this time is now attached to to this particular VOR. Keep in mind at any point I can be like abort and pop the LNAV button and now the aircraft is back following its uh, lateral navigation targets which is coming from the FMS over here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to climb up a little bit higher. I'm actually going to do a speed intervention here. If you're wondering why I'm doing a speed intervention it's because I want to get up to my altitude sooner. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to fly at about 290 knots which is going to get us popping up quicker. It's going to slow down our overall aircraft but that's okay because what we want to do is we want to build up that altitude quickly for the purposes like I said my little demonstration here. So I'll get you folks at the top of climb. All right, we're at the top of climb. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other modes of the automatic pilot here. So take a look real quickly through. Well, we've already taken a look at uh, selecting altitude. We've already taken a look at holding. We've looked at a couple of these. So let's play with some of the more unusual or ones that some people find very effective. Keep in mind this time, I still have auto throttle armed. At any point, I can override that and shut that down if I don't need it. But for now, it's fine. Let's say you get a phone call. Or not a phone call. Now, actually, we can. <laughs> I think it's back here. Um, so let's say we get a call from ATC telling us to climb to flight level 170. So to do that during a normal flight when we're not in VNAV, which we're not at the moment, I'd come over here. I dial in 170. Notice this light pops on, and it gives us this little light here which asks us what mode we want to use. It assumes we want to use a vertical speed mode to climb here. But let's say we want to do it without losing any speed. So I'm going to come over here to where it says the level change button. 
So what this is going to do now is this is going to order up N1 mode, which is going to immediately change the thrust of the aircraft to the most appropriate thrust for the current situation. And what the aircraft is going to do is instead of picking up speed, it's going to take that extra thrust that we've generated here, and it's going to use it as a way to go ahead and start climbing upwards. Now, let's say we start a little climb up here. By the way, if we want to adjust the speed at which we climb, again, this is our actual airspeed. This is not our climb speed. That would be the vertical speed mode. We can come over here and actually select that option. Let's say they call us and say, hold altitude. So all I have to do now is press altitude. HLD, and what it will do is it will immediately lock onto the altitude that you're locked at at that particular time. Now, the thing you got to watch out for is uh, you got to be quick about that button because uh, you can overshoot the altitude. Notice the altitude hold mode grabbed onto the altitude when I pressed the altitude hold button. It did not adjust this display, and there's no visual change down here. That is a big difference from a lot of the autopilots you're probably familiar with in other Microsoft flight simulator aircraft. But notice it's holding the altitude when I pushed the button. So let's go ahead and say air traffic control calls us. Uh, Descent and maintain flight level 150. So we'll go ahead and uh, 150. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the vertical speed mode. VS allows you to dial in how many feet per minute up or down you want to go. So let's say we want to do a 1,800 feet per minute descent. By dialing this in and still being on auto throttle mode, which you're going to notice is the aircraft engines will throttle back automatically. We'll maintain whatever our speed is right here because we're in speed hold right now. And the aircraft itself is going to start coming down towards that particular target. So we're going to pop and down. Now let's say they call us and say, please expedite your descent. And you're like, Okay, <laughs> so you do some descent expediting by going down at 3,000 feet per minute. Keep in mind, at any point, we can still come over here and we can do the altitude hold if we have to stop at any point. Notice the aircraft honked at us, and it's basically letting us know that we're getting very, very close to the target altitude that you selected. Now, this is where things are going to get a little interesting. I'm getting a master caution. This does not surprise me the slightest. I guarantee you, if I come over here and push this, it's going to say air conditioning. <laughs> I'm good. I know exactly why that warning light's there. So basically now you have a pretty good idea of how you can control your heading, how you can control your speed, how you can control your altitude. There's a one thing we have to check out though, and that's how you're going to use this aircraft to automatically land for you. All right, we have ourselves pretty well established here. Let's uh, walk you through it. So if you're going to do an ILS approach in this aircraft, uh, you got to remember that you have to tell the FMS you intend to do an ILS approach. You can do an ILS approach without it, but it makes your life a lot simpler. To do this, we go to Dep Art. Oh. So apparently, let me do some drag here. I'll go ahead and pop that out real fast. I had a feeling we were coming in a bit steep. But hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? Oop, oop, too much. What in the flight detent there? That should make it a little bit safer for us. Sweet. So I'm going to click on R, and I'm going to select the ILS. In this case, I'm going to do ILS 2.2. After doing that, uh, you want to go over to the index page. You want to click on, uh, actually, we're going to go in it, ref, press index. Then we're going to select the approach page, and this is going to bring us to where we can set in our, our references here. So for us, we're going to be interested in using our flaps 40 and 137, but more importantly, we have our frequency for the runway right here. We need 110.50 and a course of 224. So I'm going to come over here, and now you want to make sure you do this carefully. Uh, I can tell you how many times I've accidentally, uh, when you do approaches with this, you got to make sure those values are set correctly if you intend to use it. So we're going to go down to 224 here, 224, 224, looks good, good, good. We're going to come down here, we're going to dial in the frequency on both sides, it's 11050. So we're going to 11050, oh, look at that, it knew what I wanted. And notice it's already loaded that into our NAV2 there. So now that we've locked everything in and we're ready to rock, it's just a matter of lining ourselves up at the end of the approach. Now if I zoom in enough, see how it says uh, 3000A, that means you have 3000 at or above. Actually, 3,000, yeah, 3,000 at or above. I was correct there. And you can see that these are all the waypoints to get us down to the ground. Uh, from this point, it's kind of on us as far as, you know, what's going to be the safest way to get this thing down. So I'm going to go speed up time just a tiny bit here. This is always a fun trick to do, especially when you're doing something dangerous like trying to operate and land the plane. Oh, I should have turned that down a long time ago. Not very nice to do. Our engines are actually going to start spooling up in a second on account of the fact that I still have the flaps hanging out, or the uh, speed brakes hanging out. <laughs> should probably put those away. Click. There should be a button for arm. I don't want four. There we go. Click. That puts it to the arm position. Let's go ahead and get our auto brakes ready to rock for our landing here. And I'm going to do a complete hands-off landing here. I'm not going to touch anything except for the throttle when we get to the uh, most critical phase of our approach here. Again, I'll speed up time to get us a little tiny bit closer. You're going to get a kick out of this. Look at how bad the weather is. So again, I've got my frequencies loaded. I've got my two courses set correctly. I've got everything checked. I've already set up my speed. I've already loaded everything to the FMS. Everything is completely ready to go. Uh, one of the common questions I get is, uh, when you go ahead and press the button to arm the approach? And the reality is you can press that button pretty much any time. It doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, one thing I do like to do is if you come up here and set this to APP mode, it's going to give you a little display that looks like this. Uh, the advantage to this display is it's going to let, once this needle starts moving, you can go ahead and bop it. I'm actually going to press the app button 
entirely. But notice you can be in two different modes here. So you have kind of like an overview view and you also have uh, the ILS approach view down here. Notice the aircraft knew automatically to go ahead and slow itself down. We've just gotten a warning that said single channel. Uh, the reason it's doing that is it's just giving us a heads up to say only one of the autopilots is on. So what I can do here is I can actually come over here and press command B and now we have two separate autopilots running at the same time. You're not going to get this going away until we get a lot closer to the ground. So let's go ahead and now continue our little curve here. Again, I've not touched anything. We're getting a warning here because we did not set the air conditioning correctly. My bad, my bad. <laughs> it's going to keep on flashing at us. Now notice we have to do uh, the regular stuff here as far as things like flaps and gear and all that other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cycle the gear down. I'm going to get my flaps in the correct position. Now notice we've shut off IAS Mach. Uh, the reason it does that is for the last part of the approach, it is our responsibility to uh, select the correct speed here. Okay, so I'm going to pop it up to 137. Again, everything's completely on automatic. You can see I'm a little to the right. I'm a little high, but that's all right. Make sure you have three greens. Otherwise, you're going to get some really loud buzzers in your ears. It'd be very unpleasant. Got a pretty aggressive. I'm actually going to go ahead and pop these out real fast. Give myself a little bit of drag. We're coming in very steep. Problem is we're very, very heavy and we came in way too close. But like I said, I just wanted to show you a quick little demo with this. Laps are coming down. Starting to give us a little bit of extra drag there. we we'll pop this back to the arm position. And again, notice we are perfectly lined up here. We have this. This is the outer marker we just crossed a moment ago. Notice also we have the AOA thing. And the key thing here is both autopilots are selected. Both frequencies are the same. And we also, of course, have the speed set correctly to our approach. We have actually activated the app mode a while ago, so everything is working perfectly fine. And like I said, this is just the easy part. We sit here and relax, and the aircraft basically is going to take itself all the way safely down to the ground. And it uh, gives you a bit of a bump at the end, which is a lot of fun. And again, if I wanted to, I could come up here and pop this open. You could like, watch us approach. It's actually neat because there's an ILS mode on it, an IMC mode, and you can see, uh, you can actually see a shape of the runway start to appear. It's really, really neat how that works. All right, and this is the easy part. We just sit here relaxing. So our aircraft now is completely on automatic pilot. Uh, the ILS is uh, locked in. I literally don't have to do anything but touch the throttle when it comes time to touch the throttle. Notice we still have speed selected because we have an active speed at this time. Notice we have our altitude is above us. Uh, usually what you do is you set up the altitude for your missed approach. In this case, I'll go check it real quick because, you know, why not? Let's see. Our missed approach altitude for this one is going to be, uh, what are they going to give us here for the map? Uh, climb, localizer, channel, touch, uh, just checking the numbers real quick here. 200 is our minimums. Actually, we should probably set that up. Why not, right? We'll go set that up. Well, you know, while we're on the way down, you know, let's make sure we set up all our things that we should have set up hours ago. <laughs> Notice, by the way, that single channel has gone away, and it says now, um, that's the word command. Uh, the reason it's doing that is because both autopilots are now working together. We also have a nice little traffic warning, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. Just confirm that I haven't accidentally. Nope, I'm good. Again, can't see the ground. I'm in a big nasty cloud here. I'm not touching anything. You know, this aircraft will actually land itself. You can see I've got 500 to go. We're coming up on minimums really fast. I have 450 feet. Directly below me right now is New York City, which is a pretty scary concept if you think about it, because it's literally like if I were to shut off the clouds right now, you'd see some uh, pretty scary nastiness. There's the ground. And uh, this is the fun part. <laughs> Maybe this wasn't the best day to go flying. I can't tell you how many times I've said that in the real world. Minimums. Minimums. So that's minimums, minimums, and I don't see the runway. So in the real world, we would have gone around. But uh, like just for the sake of demonstration, we're going to let the plane land itself. There's the end of the runway. This is so entertaining to watch. I don't have to touch anything. You hear it shut itself down automatically? Skirt, skirt. Is that not amazing or what? By the way, the aircraft is actually helping keep me center on the center line also. I'm just gonna click on the reversers. Isn't that amazing? That is a piece of work. Of course, in the real world, I would uh, recommend that you go ahead and uh, fly the plane yourself down to the ground in those situations, but you're able to see that I literally didn't have to do anything after take off. So hopefully this video is interesting. Like I said, I'm just trying to provide a general overview. There's a lot of other little stuff like altitude interventions and stuff like that that you can play with. There's also, you know, a bunch of different other modes, but again, just showing you the basic functionality of the autopilot of this aircraft. Enjoy.